Uh, my name is Donna Kane, and I'm the organizer of Wild Words North on behalf of the Peace Liard Regional Arts Council. And I'd like to begin by acknowledging that uh, the Regional Arts Council resides on Treaty 8 territory. Um, it's my enormous pleasure to introduce um, the panel discussion today, A Shared Shape of Thought, a Canadian Primal uh, Conversation with Mark Dickinson, who's the author of Canadian Primal, a remarkable book. And he's going to be talking today with uh, three of the five poets who are uh, featured in this book. We have Tim Lilburn, Robert Bringhurst, and Jan Zwicky. So um, at this point, I'd like to just turn it over to Mark and uh, enjoy. Okay, thank you, Donna. Uh, welcome everybody to this, uh, to this panel uh, conversation. Um, we thought we would start with a check-in uh, just to let everyone introduce themselves here. And uh, the three poets will uh, perhaps tell us a little bit about uh, what is occupying their thoughts these days, uh, how they are spending their time, uh, where they are at in time and space here on earth. So we'll start with Robert Bringhurst and then we'll go over to Jan Swicky and then Tim Lilburn will complete uh, our check-in. We'll move into more substantial watchers uh, after that point. Robert Bringhurst. Hello, Mark. <clears throat> um, I am, as you know, on Quadra Island off the coast of British Columbia. Um, the weather here is pleasant today, uh, and we are recovering from a summer in which uh, it was hotter than it has uh, ever been uh, in, in this part of the world. Um, on the coast here, we had it very easy compared to much of the rest of the country, which is still in flames. Uh, there were no huge fires here on the coast, um, but there was this fantastic heat. Uh, and this is the temperate rainforest, which is not built for that kind of heat. So uh, what I'm doing right now is uh, watching trees perish from the experience that they've had from too much stress. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it seems to me that we simply can't avoid that topic of what happened in British Columbia uh, this past summer. Robert, would you mind walking us a little bit deeper into uh, what you personally experienced uh, over that week in June when temperatures went as high as they did? Um, well, uh... <clears throat> uh, first of all, I watched my beloved wife uh, running herself uh, uh, into the ground trying to keep plants alive in the garden and, uh, and the greenhouse. Uh, that's her domain. Uh, my domain is the forest, uh, and I was helpless. Uh, you know, the forest is too big to protect uh, against uh, too much sun. So uh, <clears throat> I stood here helpless watching uh, things die. Um, the, the, this will go on for years. Uh, it, takes, it takes a while often for a big tree to die. So we don't know how many of them are going to lose uh, nor how fast, uh, but a lot of the little ones are gone already. Um, uh, and uh, I say again, this is the, 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 this is the perspective from a, a place where we had it easy. Uh, uh, miraculously, no idiot tourist uh, uh, set the place on fire, um, and uh, miraculously, there were no lightning strikes uh, on this island, uh, though there certainly were uh, um, plenty of those not very far away. Um, 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 and, I had it easy because, you know, I have a house to live in, but the forest uh, doesn't have a cave to retreat to. And um, uh, so it just can't take that kind of those, those extremes. Uh, I, was, uh, I was in the garden uh, uh, for a lot of that week, uh, uh, simply consternated. I had, I had no idea of how how the plants could be um, uh, uh, protected. Um, we draped some of them uh, with with uh, uh, cotton, that, and that seemed to help. Um, I was struck by the atmosphere. Uh, everything stilled. Uh, everything uh, felt muted. The birds seemed to disappear. <laughs> it was apocalyptic. 
Uh, and the aftermath is uh, quite striking. Uh, um, uh, with Robert, I say it's hard. It's hard to say how how it will play out with the trees. But uh, uh, Gary Oak, uh, I, I live on the uh, west slope of Snake, uh, um, uh, a low low mountain in Victoria, and, and uh, the, the the oak looked very bad. Um, uh, and I'm not sure they'll come back. We'll we'll just have to see. Um, yeah, it was uh, uh, it was a shaking experience. Tim, did you say that you tried to use cotton to protect some of the trees? Did I hear you right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sheets, uh, 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 just to give some kind of protection uh, from the glare. Didn't stop. Okay. Okay. And yeah, we lost. Uh, yeah, like like we lost some crops entirely. They just didn't didn't do anything, or they simply stopped, uh, or or they or they became scorched. Yeah. We have another garden uh, that we work in, and and it it seemed to do a little bit better than the uh, than the garden uh, the Uvic garden, but. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it was um, it was quite the week. What crops did you lose, and did any other crops surprise you in terms of uh, how well they did by summer's end? No, everything uh, everything just kind of stopped. Uh, uh, what did we lose? Um, well, mustard, uh, the mustard uh, that I put in, I thought was doing quite well. Just got kind of taken out. Um, what else? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Jan, did you want to jump in here with your own account of what you bore witness to? Sure. Um, both Robert and Tim have mentioned things that, uh, struck me as very appropriate to my own experience. Robert mentioned that he felt helpless. I too felt helpless. Um, this was in some sense a surprise to me. I woke up to the environmental crisis in the mid 70s um, with the Suez oil issue. Um, I suddenly realized <laughs> how dependent on oil um, my whole life was. I, I thought you know, the threat was that they were going to um, shut it off. And I realized how much would disappear. Um, that got me reading, um, particularly Suzuki. I caught up with Al Gore at that point. Suzuki had was saying in the mid-70s that we had till the early 90s to turn it around. So I got really busy. Um, worm composters in the faculty lunchroom and lobbying for divestment and using recycled paper at the university. And when I was in cities, I got rid of my car, um, th things like that. I, I, I refused for a stretch to fly um, to conferences, even though I was supposed to be doing that to help my career, et cetera. Um, and it got to the mid-90s, and we were still on a juggernaut um, towards a greater and greater uh, fossil fuel expansion, um, more elimination of um, species, uh, all kinds of environmental degradation. I didn't quit. I, I hoped that maybe the prediction was wrong. I worked hard through till the mid 2000s at the university, um, and then I left the university for a, a range of reasons. Um, all of this to say that I had thought myself ready. I imagined that I had imagined <laughs> what it would be like. And in some sense, I've, Im I've imagined some of the abstractions, um, uh, but it was the quality of the sunlight, the, the intensity of the radiation, and indeed the, the um, immediate desire to protect things. Tim talked about putting out sheets. I, I, I ran a uh, a, a series of attempts to block light. And I, I have gardens and things all over the place. And I was running hither and yon trying to block the light. The heat was one issue. And 
I certainly lost plants to the heat. But the, the, the thing that has done the permanent damage was the light. Um, and uh, my sense of its awfulness, its, the, the terror that I felt, um, it surprised me because I thought I was ready. I wasn't ready for the physical experience. I don't mean on me, on, uh, but watching the world die. I, I wasn't ready for that. I thought I was and I wasn't. So uh, this has been sobering. Um, my grief has in some ways been savage. And I find I don't have words adequate to this sorrow. Um, the the uh, <laughs> rage that I feel um, around the the cultural refusal to accept that we are addicted and uh, then refusal to do anything about the addiction. Um, up there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Donna, it makes sense uh, out of uh, courtesy <clears throat> to ask you uh, for your impressions as well. And after Donna, after you've shared your impressions, I think there's enough here for us to continue uh, pursuing this topic. I, I would turn then back to Tim and Robert uh, for their responses to what is being said here. Donna, how about you? Well, um, we didn't have wildfires up here, but we did have the extreme heat. And um, yeah, much of our vegetables didn't produce the way they normally do. Um, probably the most um, direct experience I had was when those fires happened in the Okanagan. A very good friend of ours, um, his ranch burned down and he's been living with us with his dog for about a month and he still doesn't have access back to his ranch, but he did, he did go see it and it was, it definitely, it was apocalyptic. Yeah, so. Yeah, every Donna, day thinking about that. Donna, did he lose um, animals? Um, no, well, no, um, he was fortunate because uh, the evacuation occurred when the fire was like 30 kilometers away and they didn't really think that it would, that they wouldn't be able to go back in. So he did uh, leave some uh, cows. They all survived, fortunately. They were a uh -huh. little sick, but uh, he got his cat and cats and the dog out. So, yeah, but not everyone down there was as fortunate. And he certainly wasn't fortunate. I mean, he lost his entire ranch, essentially. So, yeah. Tim, Robert, or Jen, who has, uh, who would like to proceed here? I think that, um... Uh, I, I mean, it's a many angled problem or a many faced uh, uh, problem. Um, it, it's a political problem, an economic problem. Um, I think of it as well as uh, a, 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 a problem concerning interiority. What, what, is, what, is, what, is, what is a possible uh, uh, perdurable stance, interior uh, stance for these times. So I've been thinking about this and trying to write about this. Um, yeah, but it also it also feels like when I, I, I believe I come up with something, it, 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 it feels like it, it, it's, it's difficult to speak this. Uh, it's, it's difficult to bring this into the culture that, that, that this kind of thinking would be possibly incomprehensible. Uh, and it would certainly seem foreign in the culture and, and, and could be edged out. So, yeah, I think there is much work uh, to be done on many fronts. Yeah. Tim, can I ask you to elaborate on that a little? Um, surely you have some hunch or a set of hunches you're following about how we could inhabit ourselves 
in this time. Well, you'll 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 be a, a shock to hear, Mark, that I've that I've 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 decided to travel to the ancients, and, and uh, <laughs> uh, 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 to see. Uh, to see what I can glean from them. I mean, disaster is not, it's not a contemporary thing. It's not, it's not, it's not new. Uh, uh, worlds have been lost, not the world, but worlds, uh, sustaining worlds have been lost. Um, I'm thinking in particular of uh, the group of philosophers connected to Plato's Academy when it was kiboshed by uh, Justinian, um, uh, in 529, um, what did they do? How did they handle this loss, this grief, this uh, uh, extinction of a worldview? Yeah, stuff like that. I'm kind of digging around and, and uh, ruminating. As well as weeding, weeding. This is uh, an act like weeding in a sense. You pick it up, you do it. Hmm. Robert, what is on your mind in response to what's being said here? Uh, <clears throat> well, all the things that have been said um, uh, and the, the forest itself. Um, uh, hmm. Some of the trees look just fine. Many have lost limbs. Um, um, of course, this happens every year. The trees lose limbs, and some trees die. It's 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 not uh, <clears throat> it's not that uh, events have occurred that uh, no one could see coming. Uh, it's just uh, a matter of scale. As so many things are. Uh, the forest was pushed too hard. Uh, if you keep uh, pushing a forest in this way, it disappears, uh, often in a cataclysmic fire. Uh, that's just what happens. Uh, and then things grow again as they can. You start off with lichens and moss and uh, uh, pill bugs, and, um, uh, and you build it up from there. It takes a long time. Okay. And Jan, back over to you. Um, I suppose for me, the, the challenge, um, distinctly, is not giving in to despair. Um, and that's OK in some sense, moment to moment. Um, I live in a very beautiful place. and. Uh, moment to moment, um, I can hear um, or see or smell um, arrestingly beautiful things. And the intelligence moving through them individually and collectively is, it remains utterly exuberant. Um, and I try to learn from this. Um, I, I, I try to uh, find that in myself. Tim said it was something about interiority. I, I, I think that that is the case um, for us as human individuals. Uh, we're going down, and we're going down quite a bit sooner than the IPCC um, as predicted. Uh, that's because it's a very conservative body. I think the signs are everywhere that we're into runaway climate change. Um, it was a possibility for a stretch that, I mean, I believed I wouldn't see it in my lifetime. I'm going to see it in my lifetime. Um, and so the image that keeps occurring to me is of, it's, it's a mythical image of the captain going down with the ship. Not that I'm a captain, but um, what's involved in that? We think of that as a kind of nobility, right? An acceptance um, and a, a, a commitment to the ship, to 
the life with the ship um and and a sense of integrity in the gesture uh, i i hope to find this i hope to find joy in um being part of this dying We, we aren't um, we aren't the only community devastated and consternated by by this. Um, uh, there's the community of of the trees. There's the community of the chickadees. Uh, there there is there is the community of this um, this world that I live. I live uh, uh, side by side with, but I'm not always aware of. Uh, and this 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 world in Sanchathan has the name Tango, Tango, which means uh, a merciful and teaching land. Mm. Um, and and uh, so it 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 is uh, living in. Uh, <laughs> Um, um, living in the awareness of the disaster, uh, yes, and and, and uh, um, yeah, it's it's um, and that and that community um, intersects with ours. Uh, yes, I think if if it's approached with courtesy. Uh, uh, um, and with the appropriate language, it intersects with ours, and, and, and this can appear. This intersection can appear in human consciousness, and possibly appears in other consciousnesses as well. Um, yeah, so the grief is spread, spread, spread out, uh, which I find quite, um, um, yeah, moving uh, to think that. Yes, uh, but what you say about the merciful and teaching land, I, it, it, it is so much bigger than us. And um, uh, what I sense out there is, um, it humbles me, mm -hmm. the regenerative capacities. I, I lost blueberries, raspberries, beans, um, uh, scorched uh, perennials of various kinds, um, and the the blueberry bush that was half of it became completely scorched. I lost all the fruit and the 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 growth on it shriveled like as though you had taken a a quick blowtorch to it. And over the course of the summer, it pushed new shoots out there. I I find this. Uh, humbling and and such a lesson and i i try to learn the lesson there it is teaching me um so i go and i look and i try to learn the lesson That's how it is. That's how it is uh, under every tree. That's how it is on every tree limb. There is such a lesson everywhere right now. You're right, Robert. I think you are better at learning that lesson than I. Hmm. Am I think um, you're better than I too? No, no, I don't think so. Um, but um, <clears throat> uh, I have been deeply struck by uh, the depth of your uh, connection to these uh, plants that you raise and care for. Um, um, uh, I. I'm acquainted with many people who take very seriously the lives of uh, their animals, uh, horses, cattle, dogs, cats, camels, um, 
but um, I do not know anybody who uh, uh, is as attentive as you to the lives of their tomatoes, their beans, their peppers. Um, uh, that's been a lesson to me. Jim mentioned the way the birds disappeared in the heat. Um, that also was important. That the, the soundscape changed. Usually, you step outside here, you hear any number of them. Um, we have Anna's hummingbirds, a couple of males that sing more or less constantly. Nuthatches, uh, chickadees, towies. Um, depending on the time of year, you'll hear juncos, or siskins. You can hear woodpeckers. Um, Right now, the, the jays have shown up, um, yeah. but it was silent. So the birds weren't around. And um, if Don Mackay were able to join us, he would remind us um, that that's one definition of hell, Aornis, the birdless land. Um, and uh, I can see why. <laughs> when the birds disappear, it, it, it's it's freakish. It's it's yeah. it's outside our experience. But some of them have come back. Well, they didn't go away. No, they just went and died. What did they do? What did they do? They hid. Which the trees would have done too if they were able, but mm -hmm. the tree can't crawl into the ground. The bird. Well, well as Tim through. remarked, the, the plants went into a kind of stasis. And yeah. um, uh, a neighbor of mine was saying that he, he read that above a certain temperature or with a certain degree of radiation, photosynthesis stops. And I certainly noticed that too. I didn't water during the heat dome, I could tell the plants were, they didn't want it. They they wanted shade, but they weren't growing. They they stopped. Um, I guess the birds did something like that too. They somehow were able to hibernate. Yeah. And there there was also uh, 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 through that time a kind of uh, at least with me. And I sense with everything, really, uh, a kind of sick anticipation uh, that this will likely go on and then it will stop, but it will return and return again. And um, so it wasn't just the task of, of a week, how to protect the plants, how to protect the trees for a week. It was, this was a new world. And... Um, None of us, none of us had skills uh, to, to flourish in this world. Right. Incredibly, incredibly unskilled, uh, amazingly, astoundingly un, un, unskilled for these times. No maiotic skills, no self-preservational skills. Yeah, kind of just, just, <laughs> we're, we're just gonna take it. Uh, uh, as best we can, uh, and I, I'm, I'm struck by the defenselessness of um, of everything, and 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 this is what kind of kind of quickens my compassion, uh, it makes it sort of feverish, and I think, yeah, can ways be found, not out of it, that that's not an option, uh, but 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 in it. as you have all taught me, uh, a conversation is not truly healthy unless it's punctuated with a proper number of silences, necessary silences.
I have to say, uh, not to, well, I don't imagine you imagine yourself being 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 put on the spot by this, but, but I, I think Mark, your 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 book, Canadian Primal, frankly, is 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 kind of preparing ground uh, for for uh, uh, for how to stand. Uh, it's it's uh, you know definitely making a, a, a contribution to that effort, um, and I hope it's widely read. I I yeah. Thank you, Tim. I'd like to give an example of uh, the kind of. Uh, astute thinking that I see in Mark's book. Um, there's a, a place uh, fairly early in the chapter on Dennis Lee, where he uh, quotes Nick Mount saying that uh, Dennis's Civil Elegies is the closest that can Canadian literature has come to a founding epic. Uh, and then Mark says, uh, it's important to note that Lee's long poem is not a creation story, but it identifies what will happen to a civilization that does not have one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well turned sentence. It is. And, and, and a very astute observation and yeah. very appropriate in this moment. Are we witnessing what happens to a civilization that has no creation story right now? Yeah. Yeah. We witness it every day if we're paying attention. <clears throat> People who have no, no story and therefore have no place in the world uh, because they lack the, the story that would give them such a place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or remind them what that place is. And, and what threat do people who have no place in the world, uh, what threat do they offer to the world itself? Well, the, the, the the threat that is posed by um, uh, a ravenous, uh, hungry uh, species that is uh, overarmed, oversupplied with weaponry that has capabilities that, uh, that, that far exceed its understanding of itself, of <clears throat> its circumstance. Uh, imagine. Uh, um, uh, a mosquito with um, the, the capability to suck all the blood out of uh, large numbers of mammalian bodies. Um, uh, imagine uh, a, a hawk uh, so hungry that it can eat all the young birds in its square mile of territory, all of them, and then go looking for more. Um, there are too many humans and they have too much and they want more. Um, under normal circumstances, uh, this would be no problem. Uh, disease and predators would uh, take care of them and uh, balance would be restored. Um, but uh, Temporarily, humans uh, have their thumb on the balance. Um, they have uh, digital and mechanical and chemical uh, capabilities that no other species has ever had and are using these in uh, a fantastically unwise way. Every day, we get to see it. Now, I have uh, I have two questions left for the group, and we can ignore them entirely 
if there are other things you'd like to talk about. Um, the first question I would pose to the group is, um, well, uh, I spent uh, 20 years uh, hounding you <laughs> with questions through letters, emails, phone calls, face-to-face -face meetings. Um, you surely must have thought, is this person ever going to go away? <laughs> is he ever going to finish the Sisyphean task? Um, so again, I spent 20 years asking you questions. Um, Did you really, is that really how long it took? My gosh. I exaggerate slightly. Uh, I read Robert's- It was 18 and a half. <laughs> 18 and a half to 19, yes. Uh, uh, but my, my question is, uh, having spent 20 years asking you all questions, do you have any questions for me? We have, and uh, some of us have uh, certainly asked those questions, like, yeah, how is it, how I, is I it have. going? Like what, sorry? Like, how is it going? Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, in the, in, in, over the course of the, remember you were talking to people who've, who've all had the same experience of starting off to write a book that's going to be finished in six months and finding that it takes decades. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we know this is normal. Um, but uh, in the course of those 20 years, we got to watch you uh, grow up, get married, uh, become a father, um, uh, struggle with uh, the difficulties of uh, making a living in this uh, country as a thinking person, uh, struggle with uh, uh, an academic establishment that doesn't know what it's doing or how to do its traditional job um, uh, and uh, uh, so, you know, we got to watch you uh, survive and learn and grow and that's been a great pleasure. I, ha I have to say, Mark, I, I, over those years, and I'm, I'm surprised with Jan to, to hear it was 20 years, uh, over the, those years, I, I sometimes wondered why you were doing this uh, because a huge amount of labor went into it, huge amount of labor. And, and uh, 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 how you would check and check again and check again, wanting to get the thing absolutely right. And the thing could be, could be something that would be worked out in a single sentence or a, a paragraph. When I read your concluding remarks, uh, in the book, the, the, the coda, I understood. I understood why you were doing it. This was, this was, this was a way of, of uh, coming alive and, and realizing just this uh, larger range of possibility. And um, I, I I I found that quite moving, and for me, that's the that's the sort of jewel of the whole the whole thing that that um, your account at the end. I agree. Thank you, Tim. Jen, would you uh, do it again? Would you do it again, Mark? <laughs> Another lifetime. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, wasn't it Charles Olson who said, you only have to do it once? The saturation job, it may take you 15 years to head bedrock, but once you do it at least once, uh, you can get there so much faster next time around. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so saturation jobs, uh, you only have to do one of those in a lifetime, I think. And Jen, uh, last uh, official chance, uh, do you have any queries or questions? And then I have one last question for- Well, the I just asked mine to you. <laughs> we should oh. do it again. So. <laughs> I do it again. You're serious. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the, the, the roots continue to grow. Hmm. In what ways? 
regardless of circumstances, regardless of how hostile your surroundings, the roots continue to, to press out and dig down. Hmm. Can you give us an example of that? Or is that a general sense you have? Oh, I was just thinking of your story of, was it the blackberry? No, the blueberry bush. Oh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. So where are we headed now? If you want in your comments, you can sort of, and I mean you individually, personally, in terms of the, the important tasks, the new important tasks that you've taken on. Perhaps you see the heat dome as having given your work a push in one direction or another that you haven't previously anticipated. Uh, perhaps there is no forthcoming response from you as individuals to what happened uh, in June. That being said, I would be curious to hear uh, where you are headed in your own work moving forward from this point. Tim, do you want to start with you? Because we already had a chance to sort of uh, rehearse this question before the call started and our other friends joined us. Well, I, I, I don't know that there is a clear way ahead, actually. Uh, <clears throat> um, definitely certain things. There, there are certain things that, that I can't take my eyes off of. I, I, I am absorbed and transfixed uh, by the apocalypse. Um, and, and how do you write in the face of this? How do you publish in the face of this? How do you read in the face of this? How do you, how do you, how do you pray? How do you walk through the bush in the face of this? Um, yeah, these are questions I can't, I can't turn away from. And, I, and, and, and whether my response will be literature or, or silence, I, I, I can't really say, but it's, um, everything has shifted. Everything has shifted. Tim, a follow-up question to that. This has been on my mind since June. Is it possible to bear witness to something like this, to this everything, uh, without having recourse to a vibrant spiritual inner tradition? Well, sure it is. I mean, uh, uh, all m most people are are. Uh, I, I would say, almost all people are entering into that uh, uh, in, into this um, without that. Um, I gave a I gave a class this May uh, uh, called "Writing into Climate Change." There was only about fourteen students in the class. I, I was really struck by how deeply struck the students were by the situation that we were in, um, how stuck they were, um, and how they were keen to talk about this. Uh, they, they, uh, silence no longer worked, inattention no longer worked for them. They, they wanted to grab this, grab this full on. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, anyway, this is probably where I am going to be. I can't see moving anywhere else. Uh, yeah, we'll see what comes. I, I think that, um, yeah, and how to publish now. I, I think that's shifted as well. Um, so, yeah, questions. Questions. Jan or Robert, who's, uh, who's ready and willing to go next? Well, I have very little to say on this uh, subject, as on most subjects, uh, but um, uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't see uh, the experience of this summer uh, uh, as an apocalypse uh, so much as uh, uh, a very modest confirmation of something that uh, most of us have known and felt uh, for quite a while now. Uh, Jan, as she explained earlier, has uh, worked uh, on the front lines of this conflict for decades. Um, 
uh, I just keep doing what I do, which is to, you know, plow along one foot after another, one step after another. Uh, not moving in a straight line, but uh, moving where and how and when I can. That's what the blueberry bush is doing. That's what Jan is doing. Uh, dare say that's what Tim is doing. Um, uh, his, his, the students he mentioned may be in a much more difficult position. Of course, they don't have the benefit of uh, uh, a longer life, a uh, wider experience, um, and um, they don't have the Tim sense of history. Worlds have been lost before. Worlds are constantly being lost. Um, sometimes it goes a little faster. Sometimes it goes a little slower. One day it'll be over. The world will be utterly lost. But uh, we as a species uh, may have brought that date forward by a billion years. That's not an exaggeration. We may have hastened the destruction of the planet, which was guaranteed to occur eventually. We may have hastened it by a billion years. There is still nothing you can do but put one foot in front of the other. Or... I, I feel that in some way, um, I have uh, on the trail I have reached a point where I have stopped not not um, that I can't go any further but you, you know how sometimes you're walking and you stop stopped I'm listening I'm listening um, and this um, this stopping this listening was uh, definitely happening before the heat dome, um, and I, I agree with Robert that it is simply uh, one symptom of what's to come. But I, I reiterate that my uh, I surprised myself. I was surprised by its visceral effect on me. Um, the, the, the physical experience um, and the emotions attendant on that. And, um, but in general, uh, um, I, I guess I'm repeating myself. This lesson that I have to learn from the non-human world around me, the, the one that it tries to teach me every second. I, I'm a slow student, and I have realized how slow I am, and that I just need to stand by this tree here um, and listen. Wow. What I hear out the window in this moment of silence is uh, a squirrel who lives here uh, around the house, utterly consumed at this moment with mm -hmm. the events of his or her life. And the hummingbirds. And... I'm looking out right now into Doug firs and a non-native cherry and some red cedars and they're moving a little in the breeze. They're exquisite. Um, they look surprisingly well. Reaching, reaching up into the sunlight. They're putting one foot in front of the other. <laughs> 
They're also praying for rain. They are. They are. Um, but that's not all they're doing. They aren't angry. That's right. There's, there's, there's a possibility for, uh, at, at least as I conceive it, for, for uh, coming into greater community with these, with these uh, creatures. Yes. Um, how to do that? Uh, Maybe that's my intuition, Tim. That that's all that's going to save me is is increasing my because yeah. that community that there is right now visible and audible. Um, Grace, energy, joy, beauty. So if I can find out how to belong to that. Yeah. No, I think I think this is a this is a good question to pursue. Like like um, what might be the uh, appropriate protocol? What might be the route uh, toward that? I I, I myself uh, uh, feel that. Um, it's important to learn the original language of the territory where I, 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 li I live. A and to use that language chthonically, to use it, you know, to address the trees and the hachali, the hummingbirds and et cetera. Um, I think that's important. Oh, well, it has been for me anyway. Yeah, I, well, I, like when I came on, came into this place, uh, you know, the southern part of Vancouver Island, I, 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 I became a child. I became nothing. I, I had no, I, no idea of of how to be where I was. Not nothing at all. Yeah, uh, it took me years to figure out the rhythm on the seasons. It, I, like you, I'm from the prairies, and yeah. there's big winter, a three week spring often a big summer and a quick fall and here when i first arrived anyway the main speed the main season was spring <laughs> it started in late february and it finished in late june i was utterly bewildered <laughs> i didn't know where i was in the year it, and it it took me years to um re um to, to 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 find my way into that rhythm so that i i was part of it yeah and, and, and prairie springs can last less than a week. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. have winter winter on Monday, and then by Saturday, Saturday it's, it's summer. summer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but for me, the uh, the language was a, a real. I mean, it was a real kind of breakthrough. It was kind of a like a door opened. Um. I mean, I I I. I, I mean, I I was. And, and remain primitive um, um, on this, but it was it was something. That was that was fascinating, Tim. You just talked about a door opening via the language, and then uh, was it your doorbell that went? <laughs> uh, Helen did that. We we worked out the cues and everything. So <laughs> I get I guess I'm done, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you really saved the best for last there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now, I, I would propose just because we are at uh, we're at the one hour mark, um, I would propose that we do one last go around, call it a check out to balance the check in. And uh, if you have any last words or comments or observations uh, or thoughts, uh, this will be the uh, this will be the part where we gently begin to step away from the conversation. And Donna, we'll give you a chance to uh, to check out as well. Um, right. Donna, Thanks. why don't we start with you? Uh, you've sort of had the chance to observe uh, three of the five poets of thinking and singing for an hour now, uh, engaged in an extraordinary conversation, yet mm -hmm. one more iteration of their movable discussion. Uh, what did you pick up on? What resonated with you in all of this? It was a remarkable conversation. And um, I think for me, uh, all of you uh, have, have a deep engagement with the material, natural, other than human world. And um, I guess I would just like to thank you guys for having this conversation that I have been following for 20 years. And 
even though uh, many of you said, you know, you need to go deeper, you need to learn more about how to be with the tree and what they can teach us. You guys have already been doing that for 20 years. You've been on that, that route and you've helped so many people realize that how important mindfulness is and attention to the natural world. And I agree completely that in, in times like this, it's, it is nature that's going to uh, be our greatest teacher and should have been all along, but you know, we were too self-absorbed to see that. But, and I also want to thank Mark. I mean, the book that what he was able to do to take you five and bring you guys together into sort of one, uh, not one co cohesive um, conversation, but just doing exactly what you guys have always done, putting these remarkably intelligent, um, independent thinkers together in one book and what happens and what resonates out of that book is really wonderful. So thank you, Mark. You're very welcome. <clears throat> Those are very generous words. Thank you. Um, uh, as we continue the, the check out, uh, Tim, do you mind if I leave you for last? Because in a way, you're the one who, who got us into this mess uh, in 1995 with poetry and knowing. So we're going to give Tim the last word today. And either Robert or Jan, would one of you like to do your check out? Oh, well, I, I, I will check out by thanking all of you, um, Mark, yes, uh, very deeply for for the idea of this, um, Tim, too, for the idea of this. Uh, Donna, who's been my friend, Donna, has it been 20 years? I guess it's been 30. I, <laughs> I don't know. All of you, uh, thank you. Um, among the humans, um, you have all taught me an enormous amount. I'm fantastically grateful. Um, couldn't do it without you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. What was it that Margaret Wheatley said? Uh, it is interpersonal relationships <clears throat> that will save us. Well, <clears throat> certainly comfort us. <laughs> uh, nothing will save us, uh, but then we don't need or particularly deserve saving. Uh, so that's okay. Um, <clears throat> Nevertheless, it has been a fine conversation and still is. Uh, and uh, thank you all and good luck. Tim Lilburn, send us out into our respective mornings or afternoons. There is much intellectual work to be done. Uh, uh, and, and this work is a form of activism. Uh, it's, it's, it's the construction of uh, certain necessary tools that do not now exist. Um, so yeah, I wish all of us the best uh, in this and you know, take up the hole. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Tim. And Robert, thank you. Thank you. And Jan, thank you. Thank you, Mark. And Mark, thank you for your undying preoccupation. Thank you. It's been <laughs> exemplary. <laughs> I have it learned from it. Utterly, yes. Yeah, yeah. Don Mackay, in a postcard to me the other day, said, in one version of the myth of Sisyphus, the rock forgets to slide back down the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay, thanks everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.